With Christmas finally here, what kind of Scrooge McGrinches would we be if we didn't release a Christmas themed Good to Evil episode? And what better holiday choice than what I would argue is the greatest Christmas movie ever made, Home Alone. After all, there's nothing more festive than watching a little boy who has been abandoned by his family ruthlessly defend his home against home invaders using all sorts of violent means. No, seriously, regardless of how the plot sounds, this movie puts you in the holiday spirit like no other film. And with such a great cast of characters who range all over the moral spectrum, we had to give it the good to evil treatment. And yes, we're including the sequel, Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. And no, we're not including Home Alone 3, you uncultured swines. Side note, this time, since I think the most evil characters are the most obvious, we're gonna flip it around, start with the evil, and end with the good. I'm Kyle, with Wicked Binge, and this is Home Alone, Evil to Good. And you were smooching with my brother. Okay, first up, let's get the most evil out of the way. Obviously, we gotta go with Harry. It goes without saying that Harry is a thief, someone who's willing to steal from anyone. Whether it's stealing from families on Christmas, or even a toy store that has its profits going to a children's hospital as charity. I mean, that is a pretty reprehensibly low moral bar. But there's more. Harry's personality is absolutely terrible. He is angry, cold, and bitter. Where are you, you little creep? He seems to have a really detestable outlook on everything around him in which he's completely comfortable stealing from and screwing over anyone who gives him the opportunity. I've got a gun in my pocket. You open your mouth and you'll be spitting gum out through your forehead. And let's not forget how violent he is. I get that he was angry after enduring a house of traps, but we really can't feel sorry for him given the fact that he's a criminal targeting a house with only a child in it. He chases an 8 year old in his own house, threatens him with violence, and then when he finally catches him, he tries to bite off each of his fingers one at a time. Bite off every one of these little fingers one at a time. What an absolute psychopath. And let's not forget in Home Alone 2, he pulled in a legal handgun on Kevin and attempted to kill him with it. I never made it to the sixth grade, kid. It doesn't look like you're gonna eat it. This guy is a monster and deserves to be put in prison for the rest of his life. His own fear of going into a church seems to represent the fact that he's clearly aware of how evil he is. Maybe we're in the church. I'm not going to now let's move on to his partner, Marv. Part of me wanted to try to find a way to rank Marv as a bit less evil, mainly because of how moronic he is. We just broke out of prison a few days ago. Shut up, Marv! My thinking was maybe his stupidity was enough to chalk him up as easily influenced by his smarter partner. But no, he's almost as bad as Harry. Yeah, he's stupid, but he's not mentally ill or handicapped so he is most definitely responsible for his actions. And although Marv isn't as violent as his partner, he absolutely has no problem chasing a child in an attempt to rob him. It's Santa Claus, and it's Elf. At the start of Home Alone 2, he also alludes to murdering Kevin when they bump into him. What's the difference? He's not gonna talk to anybody, except maybe a fish. And he has no problem watching his partner try to bite off his fingers. And smash his face with an iron! In addition to all that, Marv seems to have a real, genuine love of thievery and crime, turning on water faucets in people's houses to further ruin their property, just because. What I'm saying is, Marv deserved every brick of what happened to him. Now, next up is Uncle Frank, and I was really considering giving this scumbag the number two spot but he without a doubt deserves the bronze dirtbag medal. Get out of here you nosy little pervert or I'm gonna slap you silly. What an absolute horrible personality on this guy. Let's break it down. He treats everyone around him terribly and we only see him interact with his own family. Imagine how he treats people outside of his circle. He's also a leech. You better not wreck my trip you little sourpuss. Your dad's paying good money for it. What's the matter, Uncle Frank? You can't help your little brother out by paying for some of those pizzas, you cheap jerk? Oh, it's my brother's house. He'll take care of it. Oh, and let's not forget that he goes on vacation on his little brother's dime and still acts like a total a-hole. Kevin's right to call him out on being a cheapskate. And also, who talks to an eight-year-old child, let alone your own nephew, like this? Look what you did, you little jerk. And for what? For spilling something? 
He also responds to the realization that the family forgot Kevin with comparing the situation to him forgetting his reading glasses. It makes you feel any better. I forgot my reading glasses. Showing us that he doesn't even care about the well-being of his nephew. And let's not gloss over the fact that he just KO'd his own kid with a chair and didn't give an F. Uncle Frank is a scumbag. But moving on to another scumbag, brilliantly played by Tim Curry, we have the concierge. Yes, Kevin wasn't supposed to be using his dad's credit card, but how does he know that? He's way too suspicious of Kevin for no reason the moment he pops up on screen. Then, when he found out that there was something wrong, instead of confronting Kevin like a normal person would interact with a child, he scares him and chases him away into dangerous New York City. Stolen credit card? Next up, we have a bit of a controversial choice. I'm throwing in both of Kevin's parents, Kate and Peter McAllister. And just to be clear, his mother is worse, without question. It's too late. Get upstairs. Now, I know this might sound harsh. Yes, Buzz and the other kids are jerks to Kevin directly, but Kevin's parents are terrible on and off throughout these two movies. And they aren't his siblings or his cousins, they're his freaking parents. Yes, the movies end with sentimental moments, but that doesn't take away from the fact that both of them continuously single Kevin out and berate him in front of everyone else. Despite the fact that Kevin is one of the youngest kids, they side with Buzz, who's older and obviously always the aggressor. Oh, Buzz. That was very nice. They punish Kevin despite the fact that the stuff he does is always out of defense for himself against Buzz. In the first movie, the mess was caused because Buzz was taunting and poking at Kevin. Sure, Kevin pushed him, but he's half his size. In the sequel, Buzz humiliated Kevin in front of everyone and as a result caught these hands. Why are they so harsh on Kevin but forgiving of Buzz? When you're ready to apologize to Buzz and to the rest of the family, you can come down. And what's the deal with banishing him to the attic not once, but twice? Kevin, you walk out of here, you sleep on the third floor. What a weird thing to do. And when Kevin claims everyone in the family hates him, his mother doesn't even deny it. Everyone in this family hates me. Maybe you should ask Santa for a new family. There is obviously a real issue with neglect towards Kevin in the family. And even after his parents seem to learn their lesson at the end of the first movie, they revert back to treating Kevin like garbage in the sequel. Also, going back to cheapskate scumbag Uncle Frank, how the actual hell would you ever let your idiot leech brother slash brother-in-law talk to your kid like this? You little jerk! Uncle Frank should have got a smack in the mouth. But no, nothing. No consideration to even defend little Kevin, who literally just spilled some milk. What kind of mother am I? A terrible one, Kate. And how about this old couple? I get not being able to give up your plane ticket. Maybe you have to get home to family. Totally understandable. But are you really going to make the desperate mother at the airport who wants to get home to her kid give you her watch, earrings, first class ticket, $500 cash, and whatever else? Plus a ring, a watch, a, a pocket translator, $500. I'll say the word again. Scumbags. Okay. Buzz is up next, and really, he's the younger family member who's noticeably worse than the rest of the already crappy relatives. Don't you know how to knock Flemwad? Buzz is a bully who, like his parents, likes to target Kevin specifically. Why he's such a jerk, I don't know, but everything he does to Kevin just seems mean-spirited even by Big Brother standards. Get a plate! <laughs> He antagonizes him, humiliates him in public, and then reacts with total apathy when he finds out his brother was left behind and possibly in danger. Officer Balzark is next, but really, you can probably include every incompetent police officer in these movies. Seriously, this cop knocks on the door a couple times and determines that nobody's home, despite all the lights being on. And you're telling me there's no follow-up police report at the end of the first movie. Really, really low standards in this department. But this guy, this guy's job is to protect and serve, and he responds to a pretty serious issue of a child being left alone with total apathy. You want us to go to your house just to check on him? Yeah, dude, just sit there. We wouldn't want a child's safety to get in the way of your donuts. 
We're throwing in the bellman here too, aka Rob Schneider. He seems like he might be alright at first, until he starts snooping around in Kevin's bag when he's not looking. What are you looking for, guy? Who snoops in a kid's bag? Another scumbag, that's who. Okay, I'm gonna do my best to rank the rest of the McAllisters here. Jeff and Lenny are the worst of the remaining relatives. Kevin, you're such a disease. Shut up. They jumped on the Let's Bully Kevin bandwagon too, and target him exclusively. You're what the French call les incompetents. Oh, really, Lenny? Because you're what Americans call a f***ing asshole. Now, Fuller is a young child, but make no mistake, he uses his bedwetting as a direct act of domestic terrorism on the family. Look at how he looks at Kevin when someone tells him to not drink so much soda. Most of the other relatives can be ranked together as neutral, mainly because we don't see much from them in terms of good or bad. This includes Rod, Tracy, Brooke, Sandra, and Heather. There isn't really much we can say about them, given their lack of personality one way or the other. We'd say that Leslie is a decent person, and I suppose we could chalk her up on the good side, but in all honesty, based on her actions, I'd say she's pretty neutral. And if she is good, she gets docked a point for marrying scumbag Uncle Frank. Guilt by association, I say. Next to her on the list is Donald Trump. He's only on screen for like 10 seconds, and he's already assisting our hero. What a guy. Excuse me, where's the lobby? Down the hall and to the left. Thanks. I guess he should probably be ranked as neutral as well, but hey, at least he made an attempt to be a decent person to Kevin here, unlike most of the McAllisters. Now, Megan, we're gonna defend enough to actually label her as the first overall good person on the list. Yes, she's mean to her brother early on, but later, when it's revealed that he's been forgotten, unlike Buzz, she shows true, genuine concern about his safety. He's so little and helpless. Don't you think he's flipped out? So Megan is a good egg, unlike the rest of her family. Ugh, finally, we're at some genuinely good people. We cannot forget about Gus Polinski, polka king of the Midwest. Polka, 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 polka. There's nothing bad you can say about this guy. He went out of his way to reach out to Kevin's mom at the airport because he knew that something was wrong and didn't think twice to offer her a ride because he was genuinely concerned about the well-being of her son. Then again, anyone John Candy plays is probably going to be the most likable character in any movie. Moving on to Old Man Marley. Despite the terrifying rumors that Buzz tells Kevin, Old Man Marley isn't a murderer. He's just a quiet old man who has become distant to his family. He's friendly to Kevin and even has a real, genuine conversation with him. Which doesn't seem like much, but there's a respect there that Kevin clearly hasn't gotten elsewhere. And of course, we can't leave out the fact that he saved Kevin from having his fingers bitten off by Cousin Vinny. <laughs> the only reason that we're ranking him lower than Pigeon Lady is because he really makes no attempt to not creep Kevin out in the store. Pigeon Lady is next, and really, she acts as the same character type as Old Man Marley in the sequel. She's a compassionate, good person. And most importantly, she puts her own life in danger to save Kevin's life from two violent criminals in Central Park, one of whom had a gun. This tells you a lot about her character and gives her the bronze medal of good. But the silver medal goes to Mr. Duncan, the guy who runs the toy store in Home Alone 2. Everything about this guy's personality and behavior is pure. Obviously, he scores big points for donating all the money the store takes in on Christmas Eve to charity. And Mr. Duncan just takes it right down to the hospital. But we know that it's far more than just a tax deduction for him. Just listening to him talk about how the charitable act brings joy to him is all you need to hear to know this guy is a wonderful person. Ah, oh, well, children bring him a lot of joy. And once again, we have someone who treats Kevin with great respect. And Kevin's own kind deed, donating money to the charity as well, is enough to warm his heart, showing that being a good person is all that this guy is about. Okay, so there's only one spot left, and we've missed the movie's most important character, so I'm sure you know who's getting the gold medal for good. The most good character in Home Alone is none other than Kevin. But how, I hear many of you ask, more good than Old Man Marley and Pigeon Lady, who selflessly rescue Kevin from danger? More good than Mr. Freakin' Duncan, who just wants to donate money to charity? More good than the Poka King of the Midwest? Yes, and I'll explain why. 
As we've discussed, Kevin's family is terrible, and his parents neglect him in various ways. He's also bullied by his siblings, and he's treated like a second-class family member by everyone around him. Yet, he still acts with great moral character, and that's not even factoring in the fact that he is 8 or 9 years old. Mr. Duncan is great, sure, but he's had his whole life to build up to that level of moral purity. But Kevin already has it. He donates money to Mr. Duncan's charity too, because he genuinely believes it's the right thing to do. So you can give this to Mr. Duncan. The hospital needs it more than I do. Not to mention the fact that he helps others out with their problems, offering oddly sagely advice to Old Man Marley and Pigeon Lady. What's your point? My point is you should call your son. And here's the big thing. The end of Home Alone 2 doesn't involve Harry and Marv coming after Kevin organically. Kevin lures them into a house to bring justice to them for stealing from charity. Because he knows that the charity is a great moral cause. He puts his own life in grave danger to protect it. Kevin is essentially a vigilante at this point, fighting on the side of good. Now, some people have pointed out that Kevin's traps are too violent, both in the first movie and in the sequel. But I don't hold any of this against him at all. Kevin has the right to be territorial with defending his home from invaders. In fact, I would argue that there is more moral character and backbone in standing and fighting them like he did than running to the police. Kevin is a young man of great integrity, a vigilante who is cleaning up the streets of evildoers, all while offering people around him great advice and having high enough moral character to forgive his family for treating him so poorly. Uh, I guess what he did to the pizza delivery guy was kind of screwed up, but boys will be boys. Anyway, what do you think? Who is the most good and evil characters in Home Alone 1 and 2? Don't forget to binge watch our full Good to Evil playlist where we analyze the morality of your favorite shows, cartoons, and movies. But most importantly, Merry Christmas, you filthy animal, and a Happy New Year.